We just came off of a pretty biblical water year in the Colorado River Basin. I think the runoff was around 150% of average. And even after that huge water year, combined storage of Lake Powell and Lake Mead was only 36% full at its peak. So even with a huge runoff year, it's clear that that's not enough to save these big reservoirs. As the reservoir is going away, what's coming out is that National Monument, National Park caliber landscape. The supplemental EIS that came out earlier this year described the emergent landscapes of Glen Canyon to be dominated by invasive species that would choke out wildlife habitat. And that is the opposite of what we're seeing on the ground. I mean, behind us right here, we can see a, a large grove of 20 foot tall willow trees. These canyons that are emerging are primarily dominated by native plant species like cottonwoods and willow trees. We're also seeing a lot of wildlife uh, re-inhabit these canyons. Yesterday we were in Davis Gulch, we saw a lot of beaver activity there. Lizards, frogs, bugs, birds, bees, deer, and bighorn sheep, and beavers, and coyotes, and otters, and you know, there's just so much life that's re-inhabiting these canyons as the reservoir is receding. Glen Canyon Dam was not designed to operate at low levels. At a certain point, Glen Canyon Dam will be re-engineered. Bypassing Glen Canyon Dam is a feasible option for managing the Colorado River. And in fact, bypassing Glen Canyon Dam would give decision makers the full range of possibilities of how to manage this river system in a drier hydrology. Whatever people's opinions are about Lake Powell or the dam or should it have been built in the first place, it doesn't really matter anymore. The Colorado River is being hammered by climate change. Change is coming to this place whether we like it or not. And so I think it's really important that the public and decision makers start thinking about what comes after Lake Powell. How do we make this transition into a drier future on the Colorado River?